The wait is finally over. After almost three years, a new season of Hunters has finally been released on Prime Video. So is the wait worth it? Season 1 received mixed reviews from audiences and critics and left plenty of questions. We already know that Season 2 is the final season of the show, tying up the storyline from Season 1. So did Season 2 satisfy the audiences? In this video, we are going to break down what we saw in Season 2 of Hunters and provide a full explanation of the ending so that you understand everything that happened. Make sure you stick around until the end so you can tell us what you think of how the ending played out. Season 1 follows a group of Nazi hunters in an alternate timeline of history within the 1970s. In the final moments of Season 1, we see Jonah kill Mayor Offerman, finding out that he was actually Wilhelm Zuchs, otherwise known as the Wolf. We also see Joe kidnap, watching him come face to face with an old age Adolf Hitler. In season 2, Hunters picks up right where it left off, following the group through the unique alternate history. So let's dive into our list of questions breaking down season 2. Starting with number 1, who do we see in Hunters season 2? Produced by horror film producer Jordan Peele, Hunters returns with most of the same cast and crew that we saw from the original season, including our main group of Hunters as Logan Lerman returns as Jonah, Tiffany Boone as Roxy Jones, Carol Kane as Mindy Markovitz, Josh Radner as Lonnie Flash, and Louis Ozawa returns as Joe. Along with our original crew of Hunters, Jerrica Hinton comes back as Agent Millie Morris and Kate Mulvaney returns as Sister Harriet. Season 2 also has the return of villains Travis Lelch, played by Greg Austin, and the Colonel Eva Braun, played by Lena Allen, with the additions of Adolf Hitler, played by Udo Kier. Even though we saw Detective Mayor Offerman die at the end of Season 1, we still see plenty of Al Pacino in Season 2 thanks to flashbacks and time jumping. With a picture of who we saw in Season 2, let's do a quick rundown of the events, with question number 2. What happened in Hunters Season 2? Season 2 of Hunters jumps around in time quite a bit, covering multiple time frames to give us full context for Season 1 and expand the original story. The season opens up in 1972 Germany, with Jennifer Jason Lee's Chava of Fellbaum interrogating a shop owner, wanting to learn more about the whereabouts of someone called the Ghost. This scene raises our eyebrows from the start, especially with its gruesome ending. Then we jump straight into the backstory of Mayor Offerman, starting in 1975, two years before we saw him die in the first season. This backstory covers his secret and the steps he takes to prevent his true identity from being found out. The other timeline is set in 1979, where we find our team of hunters in season 2. The group has been apart for two years because of some group conflict. However, they decide to put aside their differences and reunite for one key goal finding Adolf Hitler. To do so, the group takes a journey to Argentina to take him down once and for all. Still, they have to battle their internal conflict and mistrust along the way. This time Agent Millie is a friend of the group, instead of an adversary. And Jonah becomes the central piece of our storyline. Hitler, meanwhile, is planning a return to politics with the help of Eva Braun and Travis Like. Eventually though, the team tracks him down. After a shootout to bring him in, the situation finally ends with Agent Morris walking Hitler into the American embassy in Uruguay, for him to be taken to justice. This brings us to the final episode. However, the season finale features a wild series of twists and turns. So the ending needs to be explained, bringing us to question number 3. What happened at the end of Hunters? At the end of Hunters season 2, we think we are finally about to see justice, as Hitler has been hunted down and is put to trial by an international criminal tribunal. Although it should be an open and shut case, we still see a lot of Nazi sympathizers outside the courthouse, and there are questions about the loyalties of those presiding over the case, specifically Specifically Wolfgang Mueller from Germany, who is rumored to be a Nazi sympathizer himself, and quickly gets into tension with the lawyer prosecuting. Altogether, we still fear that there is a possibility that there will not be enough evidence to bring Hitler to justice. During the trial, we see multiple moral questions and conversations between the two attorneys, who are both Jewish. The prosecutor questions the ability of the defense attorney to protect Hitler, while the defense attorney believes that even he has a right to a fair trial. At one point, Hitler is allowed to take the stand for questioning, and the prosecutor is able to twist Hitler's ego against him to get him to confess. In the end, Hitler is found guilty, to the relief of the world. Still, even after the trial, the threat is not over. This is where the twists begin. On the way to his holding, Hitler has a heart attack, or so it seems. After the end of the trial he secretly took a cyanide pill, causing the episode. On the way to the hospital, the driver of the ambulance turns out to be a Nazi sympathizer and takes Hitler to an underground compound, 
blowing up a bridge to escape the motorcade and the hunters chasing behind. Here we find Eva and Travis. Eva wants to kill Hitler, cover it up as an escape, and take his role as a leader for the movement, saying, quote, Succession starts now. Eva orders Travis to shoot Hitler, but Travis shoots her instead, and tries to escape with Hitler, saying that he has amassed an army and wants Hitler to anoint him as the new leader of the movement. This all culminates in a shootout on the rooftop while waiting for a helicopter, as Jonah tries to stop Hitler and Travis from getting away. Jonah gets shot by Travis, but Joe comes to his rescue, shooting Travis before he can kill Jonah for good. The police stop the Nazi guards and find Hitler, but Travis gets away. This escape seems to signify the continuation of the Nazi movement even past the arrest of Hitler. The final episode is also mixed with flashbacks following Ruth, Jonah's grandmother. It follows the story of Mayer and Ruth hunting for a Nazi, named Heinz Richter. However, Mayer calls Richter and warns him of an attack, leading to her murder. We don't know the true motive of this deception tactic. Maybe he was afraid Ruth figured him out. Finally, we are flashed back to Jonah mourning the death of Ruth two months later and Mayer being there to console him, however genuine it might have been. The rest of the story starts to wrap up. Billy gets a call saying that she is going to be honored, but she is still grappling the guilt of having shot Prince, confessing to the murder, but they ignore it. We get to see Jonah and Clara get married, with the whole crew present. Minus Joe, who is off traveling on his motorcycle. At the wedding, Jonah and Millie reassure each other that they are good people and not monsters, despite their guilt. We also get closure seeing Hitler locked up. In a scene where Hitler is given a meal by a guard and called by his inmate number, by which he becomes incredibly upset. Here we see Hitler reduced to a number the same way that so many victims were in the Holocaust giving him a taste of his own medicine. Throughout season 2, we see Jonah question whether or not he still wants to continue hunting Nazis, even telling Harriet at the end that he is quote out of the game. However, Harriet tells Jonah that Ruth was murdered by Heinz Richter and the order was given by the wolf, showing him the phone records from the toy shop. She says to him, evil doesn't rest, Jonah, evil doesn't retire, so why should we? In the final scene of the season, we see Jonah staring at an older man in a cafe. As Jonah keeps staring, the man grows increasingly uncomfortable, as if he has has been figured out. This scene gives us a hint that Jonah hasn't stopped hunting after all. There you have it, a full breakdown of everything from the second and final season of Hunters. What did you think of the new season of the show? Are you disappointed that there won't be a third season? Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends to get their thoughts as well. Of course, be sure to subscribe to the Weekday Watch so you don't miss any of the buzz surrounding Hunters or the rest of your favorite shows and films. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next breakdown.